Hi, and welcome once again. This is a brand new season of What's the Story here on The People Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. My name is Joe Painter. Check out all the stories on thepeoplechronicles.com because they're all quite fascinating. And uh, we're going to start it with the train. Maybe all aboard the train, I can say that. Um, Jane Runyon, hey, how you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> I'm all aboard, are you? <laughs> and Valerie Boomer is with us. Hi, Valerie. Hi, hi. And so this, I can't help it. This begs it. What, what do an architect, an artist, and um, a lighting designer have in common? Space. <laughs> trains, come on! <laughs> train. was a trick question. It was a trick question. Absolutely, we have trains in common. So you're the artist. I am. And um, we all are artists, though. We have to clarify that. We all are artists? Me all included? three of us. OK, I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know about me. So the three of you are artists. And we're going to start with the two of you, because Lynn Redding will join us in episode number two. <gasps> we're going to connect these together. Taste but tune. if we can rewind a little bit, uh, Jane, you called me up and you said, Joe, are you familiar with the ghost train? And I said, um, um, not wanting to be stumped. Um, it, it, it's a train at Halloween and ghosts are on and it's a scary thing. And he went, oh no. Well, it could be that. You actually did say that. It could be that. Uh, this project really came out of a walk on the High Line several years ago. Um, the High Line in New York is um, so historical and so much a part of what uh, has made America today. So it's a broad subject but we were specific to the High Line in New York when the three of us met and talked about it. For the benefit of somebody who might not be real familiar with the High Line, how would you describe that? What, what is it exactly? In the 1890s, there was um, so much confusion happening on, in the Meat District of New York, which is Chelsea today, the art community, that um, both the cars were meeting, the passengers, the pushcart markets were all meeting and converging on this part of New York to basically give out all the supplies to the full the city and it became so dangerous that they they tried to bring in the cowboys to sort of control it like early policemen and what happened was that um, people were being killed the cattle were being brought in it was just complete mayhem and they decided what if we wrote put the train up two stories and then below would be the markets and that happened out of sheer necessity. So the high line is actually all over America, places mm -hmm. that that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. This is one of the great um, beginnings of that story. So when we looked at it, the first thing that we sort of were interested in is they've done an amazing job keeping the rail lines, keeping the original plants there. Um, the on the elevated, on, on the, the elevated, elevated line. And it was a, a mess in the 70s. It was completely a derelict area. So in the 70s, um, Lyndon Miller and her son, people got together and said, you know, this could probably be something important that could be a park that people could understand and see New York in a new way. Mm -hmm. So our interest really was, let's reframe this and bring some of the history back in ways to explain what it was like to bring in huge herds of cattle and bring the train back in just even some form. And we call it a ghost because we would do it in an interesting contemporary art way. You'll see more about that when you see some of the artwork that has evolved from this project. Mm -hmm. um, just for some, some clarity, the High Line now, there's no train. It is Correct. not active. There's no train. So it's almost been repurposed, much like um, people are very familiar with rails to trails, mm -hmm. where they've taken old rail lines and taken out the ties and the rails, and now uh, they have bike and walking trails. So it's repurposing the space mm -hmm. that trains took, a very vital part in, in our our society, and repurposed it for the way we function now. Correct. Yeah. Um, trains resonates. When you say train, you probably don't think of just a train. There's a memory, there's a sound, there's a sense, and maybe even a smell. But it's, it rings true in so many of us. It's fascinating. And I think you found that um, as you explored this more. So the three of you ladies, and I'm saying the three of you, you'll meet Lynn next, t or Lynn, excuse me, next time. Um, you were at a, a lecture in New York. We went a tour of the High Line. And, and uh, Valerie and I have a 40-year history of um, artistic dialogue. And we sort of quickly came to like, boy, I'd love to see sort of the scale of the train and sort of hear that. And um, 
the cattle is so important because it's the meat district. So this evolved over a four-year period of us meeting in New York and meeting in Reading because we are the Reading Railroad, and that is just amazing. And it's sort of, it is the touchstone for all of us to work on this project. Our next stop is the, Berks is the um, History Center to just sort of be sure how we want to connect them. And it's a ghost because it'll come and go. It'll be entertaining. It'll be interactive. And boo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. what was this lecture about that, that Linda, was it Lyndon Miller, who, who gave this lecture? And, and I know she wrote a book, and one of her quotes, uh, which I think is, is fascinating and it's happening here in Reading, is, make it gorgeous and they will come. Keep it that way and they will help. And there is a revitalization happening right here in downtown Reading on Penn Street that really goes along with that philosophy without quoting it per se. So when you went to this lecture, was that the... Um, pivotal point, the lightning rod that made you go, there's an art project in this that will connect so many areas of the country? Was it in that lecture that you heard something, um, Valerie? I think partially, I mean, the, the idea that you're bringing uh, vegetation from different parts of the country or that would be appropriate for on the High Line and how that influenced the planting. So Definitely, so, so that, that evokes a certain feeling as you're walking through this landscape um, uh, in between the railroad lines that are, you know, still there. So when you bring uh, up vegetation, could you describe the High Line today? Is it is it a, uh, a garden, if you will, a raised a, garden that you walk through? It's a, I'd, I'd say a raised garden, raised park, mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, what draws people really to it. But the, the way you walk through it is as if almost like you're on a train because it's a linear mm -hmm. direction, mm -hmm. you know, the way you go through it and the way you experience visually what you see, planting as well as the buildings, you have the sense of moving. I mean, you don't stand still that much, but you just keep going, I think. So it has a, there's sort of a feeling of a train, but not, it's not there anymore. So it's interesting too how um, vegetation and floral design and gardens connected with trains. And then you mentioned Paul Van Meter, who's a Wyomissing resident, and, and his story. And dear friend, and he was very connected with the High Line in New York, and died suddenly. And I met uh, the woman who wrote the book on the High Line, and said, there's something there that I feel like I really want to express that hasn't been said. And it was ins inspirational to all three of us. We're just like, we want to frame the rail in a different way that is um, educational, fun, uh, and somewhat organic. And especially because it's a ghost, it's like, when does it show up? And we're not looking for people to necessarily see it, like bang them over the head. It might be something very subtle that perhaps then they would look at a flower differently. They would see the Empire State you know, building in the distance differently. So when we say frame, it's in a very, um, metaphoric way. I'm not sure. We do mm -hmm. like the idea of the viewfinders. We do like that it really identifies the city in a different way. And I think that's why it's so popular. You know what's ringing in my head right now as you're talking about this? Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> oh. it, it is because yeah. the ghost of Christmas past. And I think that's a way to bring this up. But So yeah. ghost is, has nothing to do with ghosts or scary, but that, that energy yeah, of, of years gone by and what happened in this space and bringing that alive so that when you, we walk in this space today, we can visualize perhaps the people that walked in 100 years ago and what their life was like at that point. Is that a fair assessment of what you're doing? Absolutely. I think that, yeah. And I think you can't not, you cannot not mention somebody like um, the project that Cristo did. He literally reframed um, the park in New York, Central Park, with those orange markers, and everybody saw the park differently. So certainly he would be an example of... You have to help me. I'm not familiar with Cristo Th or okay. this park. That's okay. Well, he's a, a very famous um, public art um, artist. Artist, yeah. yeah. And, and he, what he did was identify different parts of the world in a new way that you'd see differently. Like he wrapped pink... Um, Oh, canvas all over the uh, Caribbean. In the, in the Caribbean. And so you'd see it from the sky. So that's not exactly what we're doing, but it, it is related in that we want you to keep rethinking what we're looking at. 
So as an architect, Valerie, what are you seeing here that you're bringing to this project of the ghost train to bring this alive for people across the country? I, I, well, in a way, it's still hard, a little bit hard to figure out what the structure might be, but ideally we'd like to have something sort of floating, I think, somewhere off the high line, the, the visual references to the train, maybe in an abstract form or maybe somewhat literal, or it could be in something you're walking through or... Um, and then the, the viewfinders, like as if, you know, when you're looking at through the windows in the train. Oh. The movement of that. You almost could see the people in it. You could see the, either or the, see the people in it or the animals in it or, or what you see looking out. Although the animals would have been looking through these sort of slots. Oh, with correct. Very thin, right, right, right. Which is like, what do you, you know. And we have it's incorporated a, that into, we've done 24 collages called the concept collages and we address some of these kinds of things in those particular pieces um, which are really just the concept that we could take from there and apply to a light show, apply to a sound show, apply to dancers. So the artistic disciplines are very open to us. We first see the idea of video and projecting things that come and go. One of the pieces is called Now You See Us, Now You Don't. So we'll yeah. How do we bring this back to Reading? Is Red Franklin Street Station is all over my head right now, and oh, I don't know if it applies. Oh, it absolutely applies because we're using Reading as our touchstone, and it is the train station that's recently been redone, and Reading is very connected to Philadelphia and New York. So, and it's the Reading Railroad. I mean, there's and Lynn's last name is Reading. There's just many connections. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Lynn's <laughs> last name is Redding, we were talking about Lynn Redding, and you'll meet her next in our next episode of What's the Story? It's part two of The Ghost Train, and it could be coming right here to Redding, Berks County. <laughs>